Hey guys, welcome back to HTC Recharge Tournament Day 2. Sorry about the downtime there, but we do, um, we do, we saw some issues with uh, the stream uptime. We don't want you guys to miss any of the cool moments. So it's better this way that we have a little bit of a break and uh, hopefully things are smooth sailing from here on out. So the match is coming up here. We have Zele versus Gara, and Nimsh, you're saying that you were uh, quite excited about this one. Any any particular reason why? Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm really excited because Gara brought a lot of interesting decks. Uh, we've seen yesterday the Priest, which is not That's a true. standard build. Uh, I I can't really re recall what's um, different about it, but we've seen a lot of uh, weird card choices. Uh, he brought a Flame Waker Mage, I believe, and a Hunter mm -hmm. was also quite different. Some was he playing the Strangle Thorn Tiger, or was it somebody was playing Strangle Thorn Tiger? I'm not sure if that was it. That. May have been Gara. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. A lot of players played. Like almost every single player in the tournament had a Hunter deck, so it's kind of hard to feel like uh, confident about that. But I think it was uh, Gara as well. Yeah, definitely Gara having. Um... A different lineup than all other players, but you know those guys are top guys. Uh, Temple Storm Gara, uh, I think right now he's uh, 14th in the world and the in the ranking. Mm -hmm. uh, Zale not far behind him. Uh, I believe Zale is 20 something, 26. So uh, both are top players. Zale obviously from Team Archon, uh, living in the Archon house with all the other top players like Amaz, uh, Farbat. Yeah. So um, a clash of titans, and one of them is going to get eliminated. Yeah, we saw Zelly have a few missteps in uh, his game. Uh, they weren't much, like basically everybody who's ever played Patron Warrior has made some kind of suboptimal play, like probably almost every game, in fact. It's just uh, they get hit with the scrutiny of everyone else watching. Um, but actually there was a Reddit thread at the end and apparently there was some way to get like 100% lethal in one of the uh, in one of Zelly's games, but wow. it was like it was really, really tough. Um, what like I, it took a while until people like puzzled it out, basically. What I mostly recall about Zelly from yesterday is that he really avoids Warzone Commander, or like Warzone Commander avoids Zelly. So mm. as long as he draws into his Warzone Commanders, maybe it will be easier to figure out lethals. Yeah, the, the lethal uh, was something like. Um, not playing the frothing until playing both war songs in play and suiciding the other creatures into Sylvanas and then Sylvanas can only steal either of the war songs and then the oh. frothing is guaranteed charge and then you end for exact lethal with the axe hit or something wow. like that. But yeah. then you have a limited time and all those triggers so... Yeah, yeah, come on. Pretty come on. impressive. Pretty, pretty okay. crazy stuff. Those puzzles, like every turn is a puzzle, but you have those crazy turns with, with Patron. That's why Harsin. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the players have locked in a Priest from Gara, uh, Patron Warrior from Zele in the opening game. I think um, we kind of thought Gara's Priest might be kind of bad against Patron Warrior, and I think he ended up winning against Patron Warrior, like 1 0 with the deck, didn't he? Uh, I think he was. He was playing versus Shao, and uh, he won versus Handlock, I believe. Oh, which was, yeah, that's right. Which, which was, was another a bad matchup. matchup. Yeah. It was a bad matchup, but he won it still. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll have to see uh, the true flexibility of this deck as it gets pinned up the pinned up against the Grimpation Warrior. Truth is, you can't really run a serious deck these days and have it suck against Grimpation Warrior, so it really can't be that bad. Uh, in my experience, for Priest, you kind of have to play a pretty aggressive uh, type of game to uh, to beat him up, but it is it is possible. I really don't recall what he was playing. Uh, I mean, it was a control Priest, right? Like he had... Um... Mm. It was a Circle Heal, um, a lot of like heal cards with the Injured Blade, so fairly standard control. It's like, if you if you think about it, did, did he play Doom's, um, Death Lord as well? Uh, I don't think we saw Death Lords. He may have been playing it, but from what I remember, it was Dog who was playing the yep. Death Lord anti aggro priest. All right, because like Death Lord is awkward versus Grim Patient, but if you don't run Death Lords, uh, if you run more big creatures, maybe Patron will be in trouble. Like, it, it depends um, if you get those small creatures, if um, Patron can attack into them and multiply. But if it can't, if you keep um, 
big board, let's say, with free creatures, and you avoid mm -hmm. the frothing kill, a uh, frothing um, finish, then maybe Gara can actually take it, um, keep himself alive at 30 health most of the time. I actually want to mention that I think the Deathlord version is probably stronger. <laughs> because Why is that? Um, you just totally mess up some of the combos that the warrior has. Like I've seen it. I haven't seen many games of that matchup, but I've seen a few. And generally, it's like you know you death lord out a grim patron and kill it instantly, or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, that's actually true. Or a war song. So it, it works pretty well against combo decks that involve uh, creature combos, which is exactly what grim patron is. Um, so we missed the first few turns, but it, we didn't really miss much. There's basically no plays from either player here. Standard um, priest versus warrior, right? Nothing standard happening. indeed. Yeah, nothing is happening. But uh, Gara does have the Harrison Jones, which is again going to kind of screw up the combo a little bit. Uh, he has the piloted Treader here, so it's it's a pretty good opportunity to uh, bait out a Death Spite, which you can then slay with your Harrison. That, that's the difference, actually. Uh, Pilot Shredder is not that common in Priest, and uh, it is a pretty good card. It, it will provide him with a minion. He gets some. He gets some damage early. And it doesn't die to the Wyrmund effect from Death's Bite, so... No, but actually that's a really bad one, because um, you can't play around Execute anymore. So, I think if you got just a minion that had... Let's say you got a Raptor, I think you'd consider running like a, a so Circle Heal to, to not get executed. But the Pyromancer prevents you from being able to do that, and... Does Zele have full answers? Um, I see the Execute, I think that's... That might be worth playing. But an answer for the Pyromancer might not be there. Azala is actually playing the version with double shield block. Uh, we haven't seen any shield slumps from him, but double shield block was there. Mm -hmm. Can you maybe... Hmm. Oh, that might be bad. Oh no, it's in the whirlwind light, okay. And gets and another execute. the other execute, so it makes it a very easy play. Yeah, I was thinking that he'd do uh, just execute an acolyte, and I think he would have been milled with um, with Northshire, uh, Belcher, and double circle heal. But it, even if you get milled, it's not that devastating. Uh, he had most of the. He had a patron. Um, if you actually mill double war song, that might be weird. It'd basically be the same game Zele was playing in the last uh, in the last uh, day of HTC Recharged, where you know he had to play this deck I think two or three times, and it, every single time he played it, both War Songs seemed like they were on the bottom five cards. Yeah, definitely never drank War Songs, but this time he actually got the War Song, so already he has War Song Patron. Uh, some were in the facts. Uh, I think against the Priest though, he will need the Frothing. That's the key card uh, that he needs to get at some point. For Gara, though. Mm. I think actually, like, if he goes Belcher here and. Uh... I like the Power Word Shield. Like, you saw one execute, extending your 4 5's health to 7 kind of makes it unkillable. What do you think about Veil is chosen on um, Acolyte? Because next turn, you know that Zelay has a coin. Next turn is seven, so he can possibly war some page on you. Mm -hmm. With with this play, the war song patron is still a possibility. But if you veil in, then at least um, there is one less patron, and um, Aqua will draw a lot of cards. There are no silence cards for a green patron deck. Normally, they don't play at all. No silence. Okay, I like it. Oh man, there is a frothing pickup. He doesn't have he only has one world effect and he doesn't have Thorison, so he he will not have enough mana to, to deal with it, but uh... Yeah, it's really hard to pump up that frothing. We also like he's down a whirlwind, he's also down a death spite. And while Grim Patron doesn't really require that many whirlwind effects if you have like uh, inner uh, inner rages and stuff, the frothings do. The frothings really need those whirlwind effects. So what does he really need this turn? Uh, 
is that I think that's actually Torison, so he might cycle Balrage here. If he picks up Torison, he will still be able to coin it. Or you just play Acolyte, Unstable Ghoul, and Armor Smith. I mean, a... right now, yeah, the Priest has seven cards, so if he draws more cards, it's fine. Right? Yeah, you don't. You don't care about free strain cards as much. I think uh, here you actually. You don't want to cabal the ghoul. And you don't want to give him an extra card. So I guess that means you have to cabal the acolyte. There's just no other choice. You don't want to give him cards, but you can't cabal the ghoul because you enable more combos. Yeah, that's true. You want to kill uh, the ghoul right now? Uh, yeah, you can give him two cards. Which isn't that bad. I think stealing Aqualad is actually amazing. Um, yeah, he gets no value. Yeah, from it. yeah, you can get you can get some armor with the armor smith, but the truth is that it, like if if the warrior gets the right cards, it doesn't matter if you have thirty or fifty; it's the same. So you really just have to limit the card draw and push for damage. And yeah, it has to be the acolyte. And do you overdraw here? Um, you have to play one card that you draw, and if that card, if that means like using um, Light of the Naru, I think that's good enough. I think you might just burn Light of the Naru. Oh, did he make it? Did he play something? No, he didn't. Some cards, uh, but even if he overdraws here. Oh, whoa, that was dumb. Well, I don't think it matters that much, because you have a very good board, and uh, it's not like Patron can, can deal with it easily. Oh, okay, well, no, no, that wasn't too dumb. Like, you, you protect your biggest creature from Execute. That's yeah. fine, I guess. But man, can the warrior mill you. In some scenarios, at least. I, I think uh, Zale is mo uh, more concerned about drawing himself than uh, giving the draws to the priest at the, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think Gar is like, yeah, I'm gonna get milled, whatever. I just want to protect my board as much as possible and deny draws. Actually, um, Zale might go Warsong Patron anyway, and then with Rage, he will mill two cards because he, he wants to attack one already. Okay, there's an execute. Well, that's really good for Gara. Yeah, healing the um, uh, healing the uh, Cabal Shadow Priest was absolutely worth it. Because he got to keep the biggest creature, but he also dropped one of the liabilities, which is the Acolyte. I'm just thinking what Zalai can do um, to maybe still win the game. Uh, he's probably aiming for a big battle rage next turn. That would be 9 mana, 10... Yeah, so if he goes uh, Warsong Patron and Inner Rage, he will be able to kill some stuff on the board and then get the Battle Rage to maybe draw into a second Frothing and some World Effects. And I think this... Second. Sorry to interrupt you, but I think this is actually a turn where it's worth it to Lighter the Naru, your opponent. You can Lighter the Naru, your opponent, heal one of your creatures to get that draw back. You still won't overdraw. And then Emperor Tharson. And then if you're... Because then you have two big threats on the board. You have the Light of the Naru, which is a three attack minion. Then you have Emperor Tharson. And both of them basically win you the game. Like, with double circle heal, you will win the game with Light of the Naru. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of sense. To have a um, Light Warden. Mm. But uh, right now, he has a lot of damage on board anyway. That's, uh, what, 15? With the uh, Holy Nova, that's 17. Alright, so Zalei is probably going for the um, Battle Rage plan. Getting some minions on board. Yeah, that's a pretty good one to get. Because in the end, there's probably only going to be one patron with 3 health. He will be able to kill Tarisen as well. But uh, he is definitely behind. Uh, Priest is really aggressive. Gara has a full hand. He needs to well, pick up. Zele has quite a few too. But he needs specific cards. He he got some life gain. He has uh, double 
Okay, there is one slam, some card draw, but he needs basically a war song and another frothing. Gara has mind control, by the way. <laughs> that's that's a pretty interesting card. Yeah. So here, well, he could actually take the um, the three attack. Uh, Grim Patron because it has charge and then kill the Warsong Commander and then spawn another Patron and kill the other two Grim Patrons with his two other creatures. He could actually just mind control this turn. You're not going to get much of a better one. Oh, and you can circle heal after that. That has to be the play. Just, mind control uh, circle heal. So you, you steal a Patron, you attack into Warsong and then you get another Patron and then you yeah. kill two more Patrons with minions and then you circle healing. Yeah, I think that was pretty pretty sick. You can even light up the Naru, uh, your opponent, and get a very big Light Warden. Yeah. Well, this is pretty good, too. You kind of set up for lethal. It just seemed like a pretty good use of Mind Control that you wouldn't otherwise get against this deck. Well, maybe Mind Control will be useful this turn, but... Um, how much damage is there? That's That should be lethal, right? That's uh, 10, 19 points of damage. Um, well, he can kill your Light Warden with Slam. Okay, you probably so will. Oh, you have like a million damage with, with, with Wild Pyromancer. Yeah. Like Wild, wild Pyromancer is... <laughs> yeah. Un, like, uh, unreal damage on that on that Light Warden. Light Warden better than Frodding, confirmed. I think you probably would have got like 40 attack out of that thing. Yeah. So many minions on board. And so many heals available. Thought Steel and Inner Rage. That will be 8, 10, 30. Patron and... Inner Rage. Patron Inner Rage, yeah. Yeah. Okay, not lethal yet. Um... He shouldn't be too afraid of the patron combos. Hmm. He's seen one patron, he's seen one war song. Uh, by the way, Zalei has what he needs. He has war song, well, no. double frothing. That's, this is really interesting, actually. He shouldn't be a fair patron at all, because not only has he seen one, but he knows for sure that the other one is in Zele's deck. Yeah, that's a lot of information he got now. But he might have to be afraid of the frottings. Okay, so how much damage is double frotting and war song? Uh, he will only be able to ruin once, so he won't be able to go through the... The Sludge Belcher. Oh man, the lack of Torison was devastating. Can he win with one um, frotting? So with uh, he just unstable... picked up a nice draw there. Yeah, unstable ghoul is two points of damage to the frotting uh, to the to the Belcher. Probably not. Okay, just drawing cards. There is a Tori Sun. He needs one more Wurlum in the fact, like a Death Spite maybe. Well, he can slam here. Slam is going to be too clunky of a card to play next turn. Just slamming on anything might be worth it. Slam on a free to patron? No, slam the draw on anything, like the Belcher or something. Well, there's yeah. a, a lot of damage for Gara. Uh, he has the silence as well. It is a lot of damage, but is it enough? It doesn't seem like it's enough. He's uh, too off, I think, if he silences. Yeah, he has 13 at the moment. I'm just taking the armor smith here. That's a pretty good choice. Oh man, getting even more patrons. So this is the same thing that we've seen uh, before uh, from Dog. Like Dog was playing versus Malagos. He finished the game with the Malagos combo as a priest, and now Gara is playing a priest, and he's finishing the game with the patron combos. 
those priests, man. They just steal your strategies and they use them against you. Yeah. I don't think there's any one card draw that Zelly can use to win this. Certainly not that. Even though he has the worst and the double throwing, he has no way to activate him in a good way. Yeah. Priest wins the game. The priest from Gara is undefeated. Undefeated priest. There we go, man. Uh, with Gara's lineup, I wasn't too afraid of the uh, the priest pulling the win. Uh, I was mostly afraid of that mage, and that ended up being the reality in the last uh, last match that Gar had, where his mage not getting dropped at least one game, maybe even maybe even two, and didn't, from what I remember, didn't win decisively either. Um, while Zele is running the uh, the standard three, he's got the patron, he's got the the hunter. I think Zele is actually playing the the zoo lock though, so yeah. it's a little bit different. But uh, the classes are the same, and I think the, uh, the important one is the warrior. I think this mage should be alright versus hunter. Mm. Uh, versus zoo, it will really depend on the opening. Um, but uh, players are queuing hunter and warlock this time. Yeah, hunter and warlock. And uh, I think Gara had uh, the strange hunter deck as well. Um, just... Uh... From what I can tell, I believe it was Gara with the Stranglethorn Tiger, among other interesting cards. Stranglethorn Tiger, not, not too bad of a card. It's good enough in Arena, and uh, it does push for 5 damage. Um, it's kind of like slower than an Arcane Golem, but you can use it to control the board if you want. It's hard to kill it because it's under the stealth, and yeah. you can't have that kill command. Yeah, we saw how hard it was to kill the, the Shades. That uh, dog played. Um, how do you play him against? <laughs> um, against nope. uh, Asahida. Or, that's who it was. Oh, Asahida yeah. today. Okay. Yeah, where Asahida needed the needed the brawl to really do anything, and it, even even then, it wasn't really enough because it's still a pretty slow way to remove. That's right. Those minions are really tricky. Even though Shade might not be good right now in the meta game on ladder, uh, still in the tournaments, I think it's uh, it's pretty strong. Uh, so we can see the hands of the players right now. Um, Gara having a pretty good opening with uh, Hunter Creeper, Mad Scientist, and Animal Companion. Uh, nice curve. Mm -hmm. Snake trap. Nothing really weird about Gara's hand for now. Yeah, yeah, pr pretty standard stuff. Now this is a pretty common spot, but I don't play Hunter enough. What's what's the play here, Nimsh? You know this one. Is it Spider or is it Mad Scientist? Uh, it's a Spider. Because with the spider, you you will be able to to kill it, get gain some minions, and uh, you need minions versus zoo early. Okay. Overall, this matchup is good for hunter. Um, it's not the best; like hunter has a slight advantage, but um, zoo can overpower hunter with uh, those small combos because zoo has implosion mats, uh, implosion and knife juggler, void caller into something like doom, free doom guard, free Mulganis, and those power turns like void caller into void terror. That's four six with a hero power, so you'll be in a good shape if you do that. And I try to build up the board for the next turns. All right, looks like that's what we're going with. Void call in the middle. Uh, if you're Gara here, um, the I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you're feeling the heat yet. I think you just keep going face. I think Gara is playing a lot of chargers and face cards. So there's, there's going to be like a bit of a surprise coming down. Yeah, actually like with Glaive Zuka, you can deal um, three more damage. Is he going for the Snake Trap though? Yep. Okay. More damage. Uh, one of the things that I mentioned yesterday is that uh, the zoo doesn't have the AoE cards. You basically, like if the snakes drop and if there is no silence, we can see there is no silence. There will be no good way to deal with this uh, with the snakes. The only mm -hmm. comeback mechanism is juggler and implosion, which is actually in Zelay's hand. All right. Well, um, so many I think it's good to use the Argus on the Void Caller and the Blood Imp, just so you can freeze the Blood Imp. You will not be able to. Maybe you play juggler this turn as well. To try juggler to get implosion. It. Juggler implosion. Maybe sea giant. Uh, I like juggler defender. You try to hit a knife on uh, on Belcher. 
Oh, wow. That knife lets you play Sea Giant, doesn't it? Yeah, it is a one pass yeah. Sea Giant now. Holy cow, that was crazy lucky. I, I think you, you do it. Oh, he, did he realize that? Well, it's, it's even cheaper now with Snake Trap. It's zero. Oh, man. Well, you do play that Sea Giant, that's for sure. Gar is scratching his forehead. Okay, that was a pretty powerful turn. He gets another juggle here. Wow, face! First blood on the face. This is my hunter's crazy. mark. Look at that. All right. Um, do we do like a glaive Zuka hunter's mark play with kill command? We have to get that sea giant off the board with Hunter's Mark. Yeah, but you have to go for the Void uh, Caller, and uh, there's probably one demon getting summoned, so one knife. Yeah, but that, that demon is a good chance to be the Blood Imp because you know it's in his hand. Yeah, you know that this is there. How do you kill the Void Caller then? Do you just go three minions uh, into it? I think that makes sense. And no, I think you Glaive Zuka and you hope it hits on one of your one health minions. Oh, he's going for the face. That's a lot of damage, actually. Yeah, he's just going for max damage here. That's a good juggle. So how much damage is this? this is 3, 7, 8, plus 2, 10, 12, uh, 17. That's 2 life. That's a pretty good uh, turn. You put your opponent on two, and he needs to heal. Uh, there is no heal in this deck. Or no kill cast. you. Or kill you, yes. I think that the kill is the only way, actually. But I don't think there is a chance of that. With Implosion, he might get two knives to the face, two imps. Doesn't matter that much. Uh, he can't tap. Yeah, two knives to the face. Uh, how much does the board total up to? He's got 12, 14, 17, 22, uh, plus two face is 24. There's absolutely no way that Zilli can win this. Whoa! He got a two, but it didn't oh, it matter. It. It. I wonder what he was hoping for. No, well, he, if, if, even if that would be a fatality to him, uh, you, you can't steal it, so you can't get the effect. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, uh, Zele drops the game. Some very crazy plays there. I mean, usually from like a face hunter and a zoo deck, you don't really expect much, but uh, that was about the peak. I mean, there was so, so many complicated decisions from both ends. Uh, it seemed like uh, both players played really well. Uh, I mean, we're talking about the Sea Giant stuff, but Zele kind of knew the trap plays. He got an even better outcome from that turn with the power overwhelming. And then with Gara, we thought he'd maybe clear, but going for lethal ended up being significantly better because it completely shut out Zele and ended up winning because of that play. And that actually puts Gara uh, again in the dominant position of being up two games to none. However, again, Gara's last deck is that mage. And man, I think this might be a struggle once again. But, you know, he has three chances. So I will ask yeah. you this time, Crip. Would you like to be Zale with three decks versus the mage, or would you prefer to be Gara, the mage? Uh, you gotta be Gara. Yeah, you, has to, you have to be Gara. Yeah. Um, plus, I, plus Gara is wearing like, a cool Tempo Storm shirt, right? Um, I, I believe Zale is in a cool Archon or Team Liquid jacket. I, you know, I mix them up a bit. Yeah. From this perspective, at least. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I'd rather be Gara. Gimme, gimme. Um, so Zele has queued in with, I believe that's Warlock. So think, we yeah. will see the Zulok versus the um, Tempo Mage, I believe, is what it was. Yeah, the Flame Waker Mage. Um, the Flame deck Waker that Mage, yeah. runs Flame Waker. Well, it's called Tempo Mage as well. Basically, you, you do a lot of tempo plays and then try to overpower your opponent with mm -hmm. um, the card effects, like the Flame Waker damage, try to finish the game with Fireballs. Um, basically, you play a lot of cards. At, at some point, you run out of steam, but then you finish the game with Fireball and you win. And it seems yeah. like you're about to lose, but you win. <laughs> that, that's the tempo deck. 
It uh, it seems like a pretty decent matchup across the board, but um, I think the Tempo Mage just plays some very inconsistent games overall. Do you, are you saying that because there's Unstable Portal? That's a random dude coming out of it? And it's a Dragonhawk? <laughs> That's really inconsistent. Yes, it is. That's like it, actually. Oh man, this sucks. That's actually it. Like, if you play Tempo Mage and you lose the opener, you basically just lose. Yeah, especially uh, versus um, a decent opening for Zalei. Uh, that Flame Imp is also a pretty nice pickup. Yeah, yeah, I, I would think not... here. I think we're going to see Juggler Coin Flame Imp, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the play, definitely. Like if you hit the if the gnome you're happy if you don't you can, you just still kill it with the void walker, yeah. And then you end the turn with a juggler behind a taunt with a high damage creature to protect it, with extra answers in hand to protect really big minions, uh, with the with the reach given by the power of the whelm and the abusive, and you get the best juggle, and Gara gets the worst spare part. Can Gara return on the back of the dragon hawk? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. Okay. I guess you just draw here and uh, hope for a Flame Waker and then uh, just try to accumulate the spells. He even got the Time Rewinder. Oh man, this sucks so much. I mean, the best part about Time Rewinder is that it synergizes very well with crap minions, which is exactly what the Dragonhawk is. <laughs> just played... Okay. <laughs> kind of. It doesn't synergize with the Flame Waker, though. We've seen the Raynaud's uh, trying to have that yeah. interaction. And the no. no interaction. No, that is actually the worst spare part that you can get for this deck uh, in almost every case. So Gara lost a 50-50 on the juggle. He lost a 1 out of 7 on the spare part. He definitely lost big time on the uh, unstable portal. And he definitely lost big time on the opening hands. And Tempo Mage is not the deck you can lose with. <laughs> if you start losing, you're pretty dead. It seems like Gara is uh, seriously considering a concede there. Looking at the Dragonhawk. Dragonhawk looking back at Gara. Oh my god, that is Second another time. juggler. And he has a minion to activate it as well. And then an implosion, and there is no way to remove those jugglers for Gara. <laughs> it's like, like a reverse Flame Waker. Basically, Zalei using jugglers as the Flame Waker. I figured it out. There's one card Gara needs to top deck. You know what it is? No, just Fla oh. flame Leviathan. Oh, <laughs> okay. That would be a, a nice top deck, actually. But you don't really play that card in a heavy minion based deck. Does he get perfect juggles? Not quite, but that's good enough. Well, actually, Gar, um, actually, Crip, I think that if any player would play the Flame Leviathan, that would be Gara. Like, he was mm -hmm. playing Deathwing in, a, in Control Paladin. Yeah. In general, though, if you're playing Tempo Mage, Flame Leviathan is the opposite of the type of card you want to include in your deck. That's true. But if you find yourself in this kind of situation, hmm. yeah, there's no way. Uh, with a single Dragonhawk, he got the Frostbolt for the Juggler. But um, you have to draw cards. That's it. You have to draw cards and then hope you get the sick Flame Waker. Oh, he's going to kill one of the Jugglers this way. Yep. What? Oh, yeah, this is a Temple Mage, so you do deal damage. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you deal that one point of damage in any case. True. What do you think about uh, Implosion on your Abusive Sergeant here? Uh, that makes sense. It's not like there is a, a Blizzard coming out, coming out, so that's uh, possibly a little damage after the attack. I like it. Might have been better than tap. Uh, you have the Doom Guard already, and mm -hmm. uh, even a power of roaming. But now this is six plus two, uh, eight. You might even play this Doom Guard this turn, um, just to go for face damage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Zelay thinks otherwise. He like Zale can do whatever he wants at the at the moment. He can just ensure mm -hmm. there's no way he can lose this game. He's so ahead that playing secure just not taking any risks. 
I feel like he's starting to fall behind a little bit. And uh, Gar picking up a flame strike with the Mirinti already up. It's not too bad. I feel like if he did the implosion play last turn, he uh, Zeli would have been a lot further ahead with more creatures on the board. Uh, by the way, now that you, that you mention it, Flame Strike is not a common card in this deck. Um, apparently, it's common in Korea, uh, and Korean players they do play double Flame Strike in the Flame Waker Mage, but Europe and NA normally doesn't run it. Yeah, I've seen it like occasionally, like um, in some of the matchups against Temple Mage that I've seen, but it is it is rare in those as well. Oh, you couldn't play a Dungar because of Mirenity. I missed that. Like, definitely you don't play Dungar into the Mirenity. Oh, that's that's what I mentioned. I, like, if you're just going to do it anyway and not care. No, nah, I think that's... Um, you were right. Uh, you don't play that. Okay. But still, uh, turn well, that's, six... That's, that's why I think the implosion would have been so good. Because you, you play minions without triggering Mirenity, you get juggles, you push for damage, and you have Power Realm and Doomguard in your hand to follow. Yeah, implosions seemed amazing, especially like you don't expect the blizzard. You don't even expect the flame strike when you play versus this deck. Mm -hmm. But is there anything Gar can do? Uh, kill the mad scientist, kill the two one. Then there's four damage coming. That's it, basically. Yep. Power room and doom guard basically way more than enough in fact and can you bm with uh bane of doom <laughs> yeah, i guess you can you can kill well, the if you want yeah you you can play it but there is no need uh, no need to show it yeah pretty a pretty uh, interesting aspect of bane of doom is that it can actually target players and no not only that it can actually target your own face yeah, you guys probably, why, why would you ever want to do that? Well, you might have like two floating watchers, and in that case, Bane of Doom does four damage for five mana. That's pretty good. Think about it. Yeah, it's important that it deals damage. Like a lot of people actually forget uh, forget about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, Zale is, is taking first game, and um, as you expected, the Flame Waker was struggling. Uh, we'll see if it's going to struggle again versus the second deck. And uh, Hunter. That's a hunter. That's right. Um, yeah, I think it's it's just a deck that is is pretty inconsistent. Um, I think a lot of players like to play Tempo Mage on ladder because you usually have very easy games. So either you lose horribly or you win by a complete crushing landslide, right? It's also very good versus the face hunter. So um, mm -hmm. it's exactly as you said. Plus, you get the the good matchup against face hunter and to punish all those, um, you know aggressive players yeah, yeah but overall i do agree it uh, it feels inconsistent uh it's a tempo deck so it's also difficult to play you some sometimes need to make those tempo plays that are uh well you you, you lose card advantage uh but you gain tempo and a lot of players do, do not understand the concept like i personally don't like to play those decks like rogue okay. and, and tempo mage i prefer prefer combo i think they're um I think the overall player base is kind of adapting that style more and more. Um, I know that's the case in Arena, and I think the recent wave of decks that have hit the meta on ranked kind of push people towards that play a lot of the time. Uh, often what you do to beat combo decks is you just, you know, tempo them out. All right, well, here we are. Um, holy crap, what did we miss? Uh, that's a good opening, I'd say, uh, with a lot of spells from, from Gara, And he is uh, supposed to follow up, but he doesn't have minions. Mm -hmm. For Zale, he was playing midrange uh, yesterday, so today, same deck. Uh, Stable Portal is a nice pickup, I'd say. He might get a big minion here. Or a Dragonhawk, again. The inconsistency. Well, if he gets a minion that he can play, it's probably a good idea to protect it with Frostbolting Face. Hmm, that's an interesting minion in this type of deck. I, I wanted to mention, by the way, that this deck is really consistent with its inconsistency. Okay. What do you think about Frostbolt Face here? Uh, mana Addict threatens some damage. Uh, I think it's not terrible. 
you you want to protect uh, both minions here. Uh, you will not be able to protect the free two that much. Oh, he killed the mad scientist. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So he kind of protects minions this way as well. Uh, if Zale yeah. wants to keep the weapon. Yeah, if he wants to keep the weapon, he has to not attack this turn, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, it really largely depends on what trap that is, and it seems to be like a freeze trap, as it's not playable in his hand here. Yeah, that's true. And there's a mirror entity for uh, for Gara, so Zale can't really play that Shredder. Uh, we know that this that this deck, uh, Flame Waker, is running double mirror entity. Sometimes a counter spell, but most of the time it's just double mirror entity. Yeah. Playing a juggler into this and giving your opponent a juggler is not ideal. You can kill the juggler that you give. But you might want to kill Mana Addict. Uh, Mana Addict, Addict is so tricky. Uh, want to use Fireball as a removal card after you have Lothan board. And then you deal even more damage while you protect mm. Lothan. I'm surprised the Garrett chose to freeze off his uh, um, Sorcerer Apprentice. Yeah, actually, like, um, Apprentice would be much better. Maybe that was the initial thing he thought, like, hey, um, the Mana Addict is providing more damage, uh, but in fact, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't just because you cast the spells uh, one, one a turn. It's, it's kind of better for Burst, but um, right now you're just trying to get as much damage as possible overall. Okay, so Zalea's at 16, uh, facing those two minions, but he does have the, the ball, he has uh, Freezing Trap as well. Mm -hmm. But this turn, because there is no Mirror Entity, he might actually go... Can can you go to, with the Sludge Belcher? Uh, not Sludge Belcher, like Pilot the Shredder? Well, it looks like we're seeing the bow here. Just wants to control the board. That's fine. Yeah. It's important for the ball to be there because next turn he will be able to play uh, Shredder and Hunter Creeper and Hunter Smart may be something big if that's not Lothab and uh, kill it with the weapon. He'll be expecting like an Azur Drake maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, right now we're seeing Azur Drake versus Lothab on the decision block. Um, well, I think either one's probably going to be answered with a uh, Hunter's Mark bow hit. Oh no. No, because the Azric's going to hit face for sure. I think you just go face with the bow and play out some creatures here. I would probably Hunter's Mark the Azur Drake uh, because it provides uh, spell damage as well. So it's going to deal 4 damage anyway, but it might deal even more damage to you. But that means that Zale is in the losing position. Uh, being at 10, uh, even with those minions on board, Mage has a lot of burst. Um, he's seen one Frostbolt, he's seen Fireball and the Arcan Missiles. But with four cards, you're definitely terrified at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you are going to see the Hunter's Mark bow hit. And oh, we're not the... even seeing a bow hit. Okay. He's not even an attacking face. Why do you think it's that? I'm not sure. Interesting. I need to ask him after the game. So, like, the, the reason you could normally attack face at least if you don't attack into the Azure Drake, unless you think your opponent will have to trade into your minions, so you maybe can use Bow later for the smaller ones. Like Mirror Entities, um, the Mirror Images. Well, it kind of backfired a little bit here. There's a... Actually, Hunt Master is pretty nice on Curve. Yeah, that's actually the top deck you needed. So you buff... Um, just drawing cards here, because if you draw into uh, low-cost spells, you can basically set up a two-turn lethal Antonidas. Wait, actually, like, if you play Antonidas next turn, you'll have nine mana. So, nine mana is uh, Arcane Intellect, get the Fireball, and, for, and Fireball plus Ping. So he can go with uh, Antonidas, but uh, it's a risky play because Antonidas can just die and then you don't get a fireball. Arcane Intellect is much better here. That's perfect. Get a spear part. 
Yeah, get a minion, get a spare part, and uh, no ping this turn. But uh, Zale is far off from killing Gara. Yeah, 25, you're feeling pretty safe. Um, at the same time, though, it's not like 100%. So what what can we see here? Um... Well, we definitely trade into those minions. So what you can do, I believe, um, you attack face with the pilot shredder, and then you kill Lothar with spiders. You kill the free two with a two two, and you kill the two one with four three. Um, you attack face with the weapon. You hero power. You play web spinner. Yep. And basically, that's it. Basically, that is it. I think I would prefer to have a Shredder on a 4-3, four, four not to get a, a weird minion. Or maybe on the other hand, like, you will get it's a fine. Min Yeah. You push for more damage this way. I think it's uh, clearly better. Okay. So he gets the... Um, he gets the Fireball there. Zele, I'm guessing, does not run healing, so he's gonna need something spectacular here to win, and that is not it. Basically, um, the kill command. Kill command was lethal. No, no, no. He can still win. Uh, he has exact lethal with a king crush off the web spinner. <laughs> oh man. Uh, even serious. more. Even more than lethal. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. No, it's exact lethal. It's king crush is eight. So. Yeah, but it's nine mana, so you can't hear the power. It's exactly true. Lethal. You're right. That's exactly lethal with that. He's not hunter's marking because. Um, if this doesn't work, he has a chance at Vitality Totem from the Shredder, which also lets him survive. Oh this man! Is, this is less likely though. The Web Spinner was 1 in like 38 or something, and this is 1 in 68. Well, he doesn't get a 1 in 38 or a 1 in 68, and Zele is gone. Gara does indeed advance to the semi-final spot. Um, we have not yet determined his opponent, though. That match will be coming up in a second. But man, that was that was a very interesting set of games. Um, I feel Zele may have been slightly off his perfect game yesterday, but I think today he was uh, pretty spot on, pretty good stuff. Um, and uh, a bit sad to see him go. But uh, yeah. Gar does advance. He will be playing either Lothar or Nuguri, which uh, we will determine the victor of pretty soon here. What'd you think of those games, Nimsh? Well, what's up? What'd you think of those games? Uh, well, I really enjoyed them. I, I think, as you said, Zalei played excellently, and uh, we did a lot of th uh, theory crafting, but I think like most of the times he was just choosing the best path, like sometimes even the paths that we, we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, like Gara, you know, he had that Flame Waker deck that he brought to the tournament, and uh, for now it's, uh, it's working out. Like uh, We always uh, okay. look at the deck and think, hey, maybe he'll actually fail here, he'll never win a game. Mm -hmm. But it's proving to be a consistent deck in its inconsistency. So um, it works uh, now for him, and the guard advances to the top four. It, that's uh, the second time a Temple Storm player actually advances to the top four. Uh, HTC One we had hyped, uh, mm -hmm. the only player from Temple Storm go to top four. He he failed there, he lost. But uh, maybe Gara will be the player who actually gets to the final. Uh, but maybe. The, all right, guys. Well, we'll have uh, Lothar versus Nagori for you guys up next. But we do need a few minutes to set that match up for you guys. So we will be back in about five minutes. Stay tuned, and we'll see who our last semifinalist will be.